Hello and welcome back to Prime Cut for some more oddities and this time up we have the Slumber Party Massacre from 1982. Now it was originally written uh, by Rita Brown as a satire on the slasher genre but ended up getting filmed as a straight horror film so it ends up with the whole film having a really strange kind of tone. It's not massively scary, it's not massively gory, at least not by today's standards, it's not massively exploitative like you would expect it to be with the title it's got, but it's in this weird middle ground, but it is still quite entertaining. Now the whole film opens up with the lead character getting undressed in full view of the camera, because of course it does. Anyway, we're soon quickly introduced to our cast of victims and the killer who is just randomly sat or randomly actually just outside the school. Now you can tell it's a comedy, originally a comedy because look at that shot there, fantastic, with the body in the dumpster. Yeah, as I was saying, yeah, the killer just randomly starts killing people at the school. He randomly overhears that there's gonna be a slumber party. So that's why he then attacks the party later on in the film. Now we don't really get any background on the killer beyond the standard radio message heard on the news of there's an escaped serial killer mm. now none of the cast of victims and school kids that are all in their 20s are that interesting we don't get that much background there's the slightly less popular girl the popular girl the standard tropes are all in there and of course this girl's parents where they're having the party the parents have left for the weekend the boys are sneaking around to try and catch a look at the girls undressing and for some reason they're undressing in the living room because that's what you do i guess now the director of this film uh, amy jones was initially an editor and wanted to move into directing uh, and it actually turns out that by directing this film, she missed out on a chance to edit E.T. Can you imagine that? <laughs> we do get some nice little moments like with the plastic doll there. There are some odd inserts like we saw with the snail as the serial killer begins to stalk the house where the party is taking place. There's like a slight strange subplot of the coach of the, the team that the girls are all in being involved uh, somehow. I do like the delivery boy moment, that is great. And there is a bit later on in the film where one of the girls is just eating the pizza off the back of the dead delivery boy. And she's like, ah, it's here, why not? No point being hungry. But of course, the lights go out, the power goes down and we're getting kids slowly slaughtered like i say you know the gore isn't actually that much it sounds like it's going to be worse from the title but it's it's a spot of red paint here and there certainly nowhere near what you would get these days but there are some like i say funny moments in it like here where the sort of surviving girls are talking about what they should do and the killers creeping in the window behind them unnoticed yeah. I can see why the film has become a cult favourite because tonally it's just all over the place with the fact that it was written you know to make fun of this genre but then it was actually filmed as a straight version of what it's trying to make fun of. Michael Villela, I think that's how you say his name, as uh, the serial killer Ross Thor, he delivers a great performance. The stalking scenes with him following people around the house or the school are fantastic and he really brings a kind of sheen of menace to you know this killer despite the fact that the killer basically never speaks in the entire film and we're given absolutely no reasoning about why he's doing any of this he's you know, surprisingly effective but of course he does eventually meet his match meet his end he loses a hand stabbed in the gut thrashed in the pool there is, of course, the moment where he rises up to be smacked down again. But that's it. That's Slumber Party Massacre. It's one I would check out, actually, if, particularly if you are into cult films. It's, like I say, a totally bit odd, but it's quite good 
fun. But it's nothing like the video nasty that the title makes it sound like it is. Anyway, that's this installment of Prime Cuts. We'll be back again for some more soon. Uh, catch you then.